Good morning, everyone. Um, so, obviously, we had the live talks and presentations in the other room. I'm hoping this will be, this is a workshop, so anyone, feel free to ask questions, shout up. Um, at the end of this presentation, I've left some time for everyone to also tell me and the group and everyone in this room what they think is next for NFTs. I'm very excited to hear what you all think. Um, and I'll just get started with what I think um, is next for NFTs, and then we'll think we'll find out what you guys think is next for NFTs. So we have here one of the NFTs which kind of started it all off, CryptoPunks. I think this is one of the most expensive. A little intro about myself. I'm one of the co-founders of Metamundo. We're based here in Amsterdam. Um, we raised uh, a seed round in November uh, to build um, an NFT marketplace fully focused for 3D NFTs uh, to build the metaverse. We're building our own smart contract to allow for interoperability in the metaverse with 3D. Um, and our team now is around 12 strong. Uh, we'll be launching our own NFT marketplace in around a month's time. Here's the current overview of uh, NFT categories. It's expanding all the time, and of course, NFTs is just a file and digital asset. So it can be as broad as it, it wants, uh, anything online, basically. I have crossed out collectibles and replaced that with PFPs, purely because I think that is, that is where the most of the market is at the moment. Um, PFPs are profile picture projects with a, a, kind of the reasoning behind why they're so popular is there is this th feeling and thought that as we're going towards this immersive web, as we're going more online, many more people want to identify themselves with these profile pictures um, and use those as their digital identity moving forward. Of course, there's also domain names. Maybe some of you benefited from having an ENS domain name where they did an airdrop recently. Um, and art, of course, is also exploding. Um, music, I'm not super bullish on the music category. Um, Spotify obviously offers the music for free. Um, I'd like to see what's going to happen there. I do hope that it's going to benefit the artists more. And utility, I think, is the most interesting category at the moment. Uh, there's many projects propping up which give you different devices and utility in different uh, digital environments. And of course, we all know about the metaverse land sales at the moment that are exploding. I just want to list here some of the tech that I'm really excited about uh, in the NFT world. So RenFT, that allows you to lease and borrow NFTs uh, from other NFT holders. Some use cases there um, are land in the metaverse. Um, also, if you want to go to a Bored Ape Yacht Club party, you can borrow a Bored Ape Yacht from someone that you know to get into that party. Remark is a really interesting protocol which is coming up, uh, which actually allows embedded NFTs in one. So if you think someone's bought a piece of land in the metaverse, that's one NFT. Someone puts their house on that land, that's another NFT. Someone puts an advertising billboard on that land, that's another NFT. And then someone is running advertising in that billboard. Um, Remark actually allows you to collect all of those NFTs in one. Layer zero, actually there's probably a lot of talk about layer zero here today um, at the event. Um, one of the major use cases for layer zero is it's a, an omni-chain protocol which should and hopefully allow for NFTs to be used across all chains. Um, That's very exciting, of course, for us and um, other companies working in NFTs because the, we, we obviously have walled gardens uh, between all of the different chains. And charged particles um, allows for composable NFTs um, where you can actually have DeFi uh, protocols within those NFTs as well, which allow for lending uh, and borrowing. So we've had a really good summer of 2D last year, lots of 2D PFP projects. Um, 
And what we're seeing now, of course, is with the rise of the metaverse and the immersive web, um, a lot of focus on 3D uh, PFP projects. So MeBits and Clonex are a good example of those. Uh, many more are coming up. Adidas just launched a new PFP project together with Ready Player Me, which allows you to actually put your personal characteristics into that profile picture, into that avatar. A really exciting category for myself I, that I really believe in is um, the intelligent NFTs. So Alethea is a project uh, which I'm very fascinated about purely for, it, they, this is Napoleon uh, Bonaparte. They want to bring him back alive. You can buy an NFT um, where you will have a Napoleon Bonaparte in the metaverse and you can actually communicate and interact with him. Um, they're using OpenAI as technology as well behind that. Um, and then the Loot project, uh, which was random generation, uh, random uh, actual metaverse assets generated and a list of them provided to the owner of that NFT. And there you can see, for example, a crown, chain boots, gauntlets, necklace, bronze ring. So this is a group of items that you can have in the metaverse. It was a really interesting project um, because it kind of flipped the whole idea of what you get as an NFT on its head. But what's happened from Loot is we're seeing a reaction where other projects are popping up and actually creating those items uh, connected to that original Loot NFT. So Loot Rings has launched, uh, which is your 3D metaverse Loot Ring, which is attached to your Loot NFT. So you can see here in the category on the list, bronze ring. You can now get your bronze ring as a 3D asset, as another attached NFT. We're also seeing um, a big increase in NFTs as 3D scenes. Artifact, uh, with their CloneX project, they gave or they offered their CloneX holders their pods. Uh, these are small homes for your CloneX avatar where you can invite friends, you can hang up art, you can even buy furniture and put them within the environment. And they've also recently just expanded their pod to include a basketball court uh, and another area. Spatial uh, is a really interesting company that we're working with and they're actually dropping uh, virtual environments and virtual scenes as NFTs where you can have meetings, you can uh, actually invite your colleagues um, you can go for experiences uh, in spatial and you actually own that experience. And then of course, Board Ape Yacht Club with their ApeCoin, they announced that they will be launching their own metaverse um, and they'll also be working with other NFT projects to include those profile pictures or those PFP projects within their own metaverse. Um, and they'll be also doing land sales. We anticipate that Board Ape Yacht Club will also be selling those 3D scenes to go on the land in their own metaverse. So 3D devices um, is another NFT that we're seeing coming up and there's uh, a shameless uh, shill from my side. This is our most recent drop for Metamundo, which was the Meta Portal. We dropped 1500 of these um, and it's essentially a portal device for the, meta for the open metaverse. We believe that you, we need to connect all of the blockchain open metaverses. Uh, so we've developed a 3D portal that you can put on your land in the metaverse as a device. And when you walk through it, it will actually transport you to different metaverses. So think you can put it on your land in Decentraland and it could take you to Snoop Dogg's house in the sandbox, or you could go from the sandbox to Somnium Space, or you could even go from Somnium Space to um, your meeting room uh, with uh, your virtual meeting room with your colleagues. So that's a device that we've been working on um, and we sold that last month. And we, yeah, we sold out in three hours with that drop. Um, and another really interesting project um, is Fantasy Islands, which is in, in the sandbox. Our investors are Republic Realm and they shared some really interesting details about this drop. And, they actually sold this yacht for 149 ETH. 
And this yacht allows you to actually sail between the different islands in the sandbox um, and have parties on this yacht. Um, so we're seeing more of these devices as NFTs as well appear in the metaverse. Something that's also uh, we're seeing crop up is self-destructing NFTs. So Chain Faces is an interesting project um, where I think they minted 20,000 of these um, for a fairly low price. And you, you, you get one in your wallet and then they have an open arena where you can go and kind of battle this, this NFT against another NFT and at the end, there will be one winner, and the winner gets all of the um, all of the Ethereum that you use to buy those chain faces. So there was a big prize at the end, and when they self-destruct, the background goes red, and people are actually showing this that they have this kind of this dead NFT now as also their profile picture. This is another interesting concept that we've seen. Um, Bluff World is. If you don't know about Bluff World, it's, um, it's a 3D rabbit NFT that you can use in different metaverse environments. Um, and they've developed actually um, an upgrade now for their rabbits, their bunnies, um, where if you have a male rabbit meet a female rabbit, you can actually breed um, bunnies. So you actually get more NFTs um, from the Fluff World rabbits, which I think is kind of fun. So those are just some of the projects that I'm really excited about. And I believe there is a microphone and I'm hoping to hear what other people think are, is next for NFTs. Please put up your hand if uh, you have any proposals. Just to comment, you mentioned um, intelligent NFTs. So to me, I think Altered State Machine, they're the most superior from a tech standpoint, in my point of view, in terms of decentralized AI. And the fact that in the next six months, you'll see that integration into Fluff World, I think it'll be like the first big use case of um, intelligent NFTs with 3D added in. I think that'll be very interesting. Yeah, also Alethea are developing their own metaverse where you can go into their metaverse and then you can hang out with Napoleon. Um, you can hang out with Winston Churchill. Um, I, we need to see how it will work out. Um, we're also seeing it, another intelligent NFT, which I think is interesting, is we're seeing um, yeah, AI-powered art. So uh, there was recently a project where someone built um, a factory robot as a piece of art. And that was actually building art within the art as well, uh, which I thought was really interesting. And then I just, one last thing. Um, there's like Lago, there's a few of the framing companies that are, I think, maybe a step up from infinite objects where you can actually, if you have something on chain, you can display it. So it'll just be interesting to see um, how the in real life experience goes and then the utility they would be able to provide there. What kinds of utility you are? are so, you like, if you're a holder, um, if you're a collector of something, and then you have it hung up, or you, you're one of the early ones, the artist would know, so then can airdrop you things, or you could be part of a whitelist to buy. Um, so, I think that that'll be be interesting, just in terms of when I meet these teams and they tell me about they're just starting to launch and try out these things. Hi. Hi. You mentioned in the beginning that you don't think that music NFTs, I mean, you don't like music NFTs, so I'd like to ask you why. Because with the, uh, like, Royal, what Royal, uh, which is the music NFT platform, what it's doing is it's generating royalties for the NFT holders, which, I mean, in the long term, it seems like it's much more useful compared to profile picture projects, which some of them will be really valuable, but most of them will not. So, yeah, what do you think about that? I, I would love to just say that I'm a huge fan of the music 
NFTs, uh, and also the platform royalty. Um, yeah, all music artists, all artists in general need to earn a better living and to earn better royalties. Um, my comment at the beginning was purely looking at the amount of volume and transactions around music NFTs. It's very, very low. Um, and I'm personally disappointed that that is very low. Um, and I think royalties, yeah, Royal's doing a great job. Um, and of course, yeah, we're all here because NFTs give you royalties in perpetuity. Um, and I like to always repeat the use case that if Vincent van Gogh was still alive or if he had actually minted his work, um, his family would uh, would be benefiting from all the future sales now from his work, right? Especially because we're in Amsterdam. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the volume for music NFTs is just not there at the moment. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Rez from Immutable, coming from Australia. Um, so I actually just went to the MoCo Museum yesterday and they have an exhibit about NFTs. And something interesting they actually suggested was like, um, the combination of physical, real-world stuff with the actual digital NFTs. For example, you might own like you know an NFT, and it gives you a different physical, real-world experience based on what you own. Um, so that's another interesting area which I actually just saw yesterday. So, uh, food for thought. Yeah, Beeple did his uh, Christie's drop, which was the the one metaverse man, uh, which is a pe which is an NFT and then a physical piece of art that you can have in your house. And he will actually be updating that piece via of online, um, and it's yeah, it's, it's basically an investment for. He will he's I think his promise was that he'll be updating it every X amount of months for X amount of years. Um, so yeah, that combination of yeah, the real world and the online is uh, really interesting. Yeah, my my question was actually about the same uh, topic. I'm Martha. I'm an art lawyer. Um, so interesting that you're talking about Van Gogh. Um, my question was, you didn't actually uh, uh, mention this, this link with physical objects. So I was wondering, in general, what, what your take is on linking NFTs to physical objects, also for, for future sales via smart contracts and, and stuff, and for instance, for, for authentication in art or luxury objects. I, I know uh, the, the Beeple use case um, where he made a in real, real life piece of art, uh, which was powered by the NFT. Um, I actually know a furniture a manufacturer as well that's um, assigning NFTs to um, the pieces of furniture. Um, and there you also get 3D versions of that piece of furniture. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love to know more use cases. What, what's your favorite use case at the moment for combining NFTs with real life? I actually don't have a have a specific one. I know it's used, for instance, for for luxury goods, but then it's more like a code, which is then in a metadata or something, and then you can authenticate it. But um, I was I, I personally I don't really think this has a big future uh, for for use of NFTs. But that's why I ask my question: whether you know wh whether you see more for that in the future, or whether you think it's just one one time thing. So here's some, here's some alpha, I suppose. Uh, what we're working on at the moment is with our meta portal, um, how we can show that in AR and then how it will give you access to in real life locations and events. Uh, so that's something that we're working on. Um, and interesting that actually you can use NFTs for, as tickets. Um, so that's something that we definitely see a use case for. Um, and also for example, the furniture and the, the products. Hey, this is Alex, Metabyte Studio. Just want to. We're gone. We good? Okay. I uh, just wanted to talk about the specific thing about the digital, so physical and digital, and how NFTs uh, can be used for that. So, what, one of the things that we're doing is installing an RFID chip in a physical sculpture for proof of profit, provenance, and then you can basically map the two that way. So, that's one of the things we're doing. Thanks yeah. a lot. That's awesome. Um, hi, lovely presentation. My name is Oyen. Um, really find it interesting about the link between um, NFTs and physical products. I'm actually currently building um, 
um, a platform that connects NFTs to hair, beauty, um, and fashion services. So I'd love to know more about the furniture company that you were mentioning, what's their name, what are they doing, and how have they actually um, done the work that they're doing? Because for me, for us to be able to onboard non-crypto natives into this space, we really need to be able to kind of explain the utility that we can get from NFTs. Sure, so they, they I, I, I can share the name with you maybe privately. Um, sure, because sure. Because they're working on it a little bit undercover at the moment. Um, but how they're doing it is they're using an NFT to also show the production process and where the materials oh, awesome. come from. Um, and then actually within the, the piece of furniture itself, um, it has a chip um, which yeah. actually authenticates that you are the real owner yeah. of, that, of that piece of furniture. Yeah. And then you can actually sell it on and then okay. you pass on that NFT to the other owner as well. Um, that's that's so really interesting because what I'm working on also kind of shows the supply chain of where maybe your hair, your makeup products, and also um, your fashion items have been through. So love to learn more about um, that company. Thank you. Um, hi, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, the lady was talking about the physical. So Broad Ape Yacht Club are also an example, right? Because um, you could buy the NFT, but you can also buy their merch if you've got the NFT. They also gave away a, a basketball. So if you wanted to get the board Ape basketball, if you're an owner of a board Ape, you could also get that. Yeah, yeah, there's, um, the, the, the board Ape Yacht Club uh, merch is quite famous, right, for, uh, for what you get for that NFT. Um, I do also want to make a comment and also just voice my thought and uh, see if everybody likes it or like give me some opposite uh, thoughts. I think right now the, um, most of the NFT utilities that we mentioned, they are patronizing. That means that being, if a certain company issue an NFT and I just buy it, I'm buying more like consumable. If the company disappear tomorrow, my NFT will be virtually nothing. Versus there are a lot of like BAYC or like community driven bottom up approach where I'm actually purchasing a ticket, a, a, a passport into a community. And even though this community is enormous, everyone who owns it, shows a certain convictions or opinion set and I'm buying my ticket into it. So if tomorrow there's like a yoga club it disappear, I'm still part of the member of BAYC, which is like one of like 10,000 people who is like hardcore early NFT believer. That's why I think most of the volume right now being traded on NFT, it's uh, on chain, it's almost like having this uh, atmosphere. And I, I wonder would this continue to be the case or we can onboard more new users through spot, through music, or through more off-chain experiences, and those people would have a different approach towards NFT. And I think that's sort of uh, the curious thing I have right now. What, what's your favorite NFT that showcases that in the best way? Um, yeah, so I think there are, like audio, they are doing something great. I think I know uh, something so that is different. They try to have like shoots and then get ready to running and then have that uh, off-chain, on-chain experience. I think this is exciting and this is something that's far more exciting than buying a passport using, you know, five or 10 years buying to an enormous uh, club. I think we can have more lower threshold. If I like sport, let's say I am a, um, a football fan. I may not buy a Manchester United uh, passport, but I may just in general want to get access to a global football club. I think that's a more generic NFT things that we can do that's more bottom up. This NFT is a community. I know it's not patronizing. I know that I can pass this uh, to my son and then he will still be like a football club thing that kind of show his commitment or loyalty on these certain uh, communities. Um, hello, thank Hi. you for, for your talk. I have one question. You mentioned um, Meta Portal. So how do you do it, like technically? How do you go from a portal in Decentraland to Sandbox, I wonder? So how we're, challenge how we're tackling 3D NFTs at Metamundo, um, and I think it's, uh, yeah, it's important to say 3D files are a totally different beast to 2D. Um, so there's a few challenges that we're solving. Uh, first of all, the size of the file, uh, at the moment, the maximum file that you can mint on OpenSea is 200 megabytes, um, where most of the time some of these 3D files can go up to two gig, one gig. So we're actually allowing you to actually mint a much larger 3D file. And 
technically how we're solving it is we create that master NFT, that master file. So that's the best 3D version of a file the creator gives us. Uh, so that's like the future-proofed file, which is ready for Unreal Engine 5 and Unity and for more higher polygon count games. And then what we do with the MetaPortal and other 3D assets is we actually uh, convert that master file into child files. And each child file is opt optimized for each virtual environment. So Decentraland, uh, CryptoVoxels, Somnium Space, Spatial, they all have different requirements, different land sizes, different polygon counts. And then we actually bundle um, the master file, the parent NFT with the child NFTs. Um, and then we also actually allow that smart contract to be composable so that we can add more 3D files to that bundle later. And that's our approach to 3D. Thank you. Um, here. I have another question. So coming back to your last slide, what did I miss? Um, so m most of the PFPs nowadays come with their own commercial rights, or so you can basically make money with the, your character. And recently Coinbase announced that they want to pay $10,000 to each Board Ape Yacht Club holder that's right over their commercial rights to be featured in a random movie or so. Um, what do you think about these commercial rights NFTs? Do you think they are necessary or um, should just one NFT exist for the picture plus the commercial rights? Or do you, do you think it makes sense to split that into two different types of NFTs, the commercial right NFT and the actual PFP? So if you have, yeah, okay. So let's say you have a board ape. Exactly. And, and yeah. then you have one, you can't use that copyright for and then you have one that you can no basically um, coinbase announced yeah each board a yacht club holder can sign over the commercial rights for the movie for their character and they will issue an nft containing these commercial rights they bought from the each from, the, from the pfp owner ah, okay do you think that's an industry that um, should exist or do you think that's an nft that's not worth existing basically it's a form of licensing um, right, and I yeah. think um, owning these assets, they are valuable assets, and you should be able to license them. Um, so coming back, I think to the start, um, for example, I mentioned Ren NFT, which allows you to rent, borrow, lend your NFT. Um, I think it's it's similar in many ways, um, and then earning money from that asset. I think, uh, yeah, I think that that should be you should own the copyright when you own that NFT. Um, but for example, with the creators that we're working with, um, it is their choice whether they hand over all of that IP or not. Um, and yeah, that's definitely still a gray area. Um, what IP do you actually own uh, when you buy one of these NFTs? Uh, thank you. Hello. Um, yeah. Uh, my name is Semi. And what I wanted to ask you was uh, about your thoughts on 2D NFTs on the 3D metaverse world. So uh, NFTs like CryptoKongs really uh, translated their 2D images into 3D images with uh, chunks uh, to let them live in the 3D world as well. So I was wondering what was your thoughts on uh, having those 2D based characters on the metaverse and like uh, how would you translate to these into the uh, metaverse itself? So um, we do know Bored Ape Yacht Club are working on their own 3D versions. Um, we've already seen um, snippets of their 3D version of the Bored Ape Yacht Club uh, NFTs. And uh, at the moment, for example, CloneX, they use, you see that you get the CloneX NFT and they give you access to a folder where you can actually download the 3D version of that avatar. Um, how I foresee it is that these real 3D focused um, NFT drops, um, they should directly integrate with the different metaverses. Um, but at the moment, it's more of an upload and yeah, a download and upload process. Um, and I assume with Bot It Yacht Club, they'll create the 3D version and then give you access to a folder which allows you to download those 3D avatars. 
Thank you. Thank you. These were the questions. <laughs> thank you, Casper. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Mark. Round of applause for Mark. Thanks, Eleanor. <laughs>